Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna answer a subscriber's question here. Um, Andrew asks, do you think there is a need for and or such a thing as a full stack quant? For example, at a small hedge fund, would there be any value added from somebody who is able to research, develop, validate, and implement a model from start to finish? Okay, so I'm gonna even broaden this a little bit wider. So he's covering the whole frame of from getting the problem, developing it all the way through to the final solution, which is implementing it. Um, but I'm going to add because I think trading is on top of that. Um, so let's just quickly talk about full stack, then we'll talk about full stack quant, and then we'll talk about my opinions. Um, so to start off with here, full stack, which I'll link an article below, which talks about computer science full stack, if you're interested. Um, but most of you know what full stack means. It means somebody who can cover an entire process from start to finish. Uh, without having to have specialists in the middle. Essentially, you're the specialist from beginning to end. And yes, there are full stack quants out there. Um, most of them don't actually practice being full stack. Uh, and again, I think the ones that do, you're gonna work at very, very small firms who need a lot of skills, a lot of abilities to cover it for that small firm. But in general, the industry has figured out this is not very feasible. So. Historically here, I'll talk, let's talk about the skills here to start with. Uh, full stack for me would be somebody who can do quant work, real quant work, which is stats and math. So you're developing models with financial theory. Um, you're developing these models and you develop tools and you create strategies. And then what ends up happening is that's a whole model development. Um, you should have a validation team which does almost the same thing except for they look at the theory and they validate to make sure it's done correctly. And then they look for weaknesses and they wanna make sure that it's explicitly stated the weaknesses and the assumptions behind the model so people can monitor those and make sure we don't have model failures um, or at least we can predict when the model's gonna fail. And then finally, you'd have implementation who would be somebody like a computer scientist who would implement this into a low level language like C, C++, C Sharp, um, in the old day Fortran, things like that. Uh, but in general, they'd implement the model. And then finally, you would have actually another layer, which would be the traders. Uh, the traders, again, have their own very unique skill sets. They can think very quickly with limited information. So again, they need to know somewhat the back history and they need to know some math, some stats, but not at a super deep level compared to like an actual quant who's developing it but they need to know the tools and how to use them and what they're actually doing and the weaknesses and assumptions behind them. So like development validation should point those out to the trader. But again, traders specialize in speed of thinking. Um, so it's a different skill set and a different type of person than an actual quant, at least in my opinion here. But historically, why this is important and why a lot of people think quants are fast thinking traders and they think they're computer science experts and math and stats experts is because when a lot of this started, there were a lot of smaller firms that were coming up. Um, they wanted to hire these new, exciting quants. You know, they want, they've heard stories about LTCM, you know, and Fisher Black, um, and all these different people coming up on the market, you know, Ed Thorpe, for example. But the thing is, is they wanted someone with a PhD that could do that full stack development. And yes, I think there are people out there that do this. Yes, I've met a handful of people that would probably fit this description. Um, but the issue with it is that when you build a team, it's a lot easier to find, for example, an expert computer scientist. So I'll kind of mention the roles here and why things are different in my perspective. Um, I don't view implementation as quants. So I've actually worked in implementation before. I've had offers to write low level language. So C++, for example, and C Sharp for implementation um, at different banks and institutions. But again, you need to be an expert in computer science to do this. Uh, you're far better off. A lot of firms hire undergrads with computer science degrees, right? You can get a master's with a computer science degree. Like right? you can find people from computer science programs that are really good at coding, right? That's they're an expert. Um, so to have a full stack quant to be able to code at that level is plausible. But you can find a lot of really good computer scientists. But finding someone that can do everything is really challenging. Um, and over the years, it's kind of split. So this is why I don't view them as quants anymore. And the reason for this is that nowadays, a lot of firms will come in, hedge funds, for example, and hire just computer scientists to specialize and optimize the math, the model, uh, and get it to implement very, very quickly. Um, this is at banks, trading firms, hedge funds, everything. Um, but you have computer scientists. Traders, again, they're a really weird breed, and it's hard to answer questions about traders because the skills needed for it somewhat cover everything behind it, but you also have to have this quick thinking skill and how you teach that, 
I, I just don't know. <laughs> I've had guys talk to me that have been traders in the industry for years, 20, 30 years, and they'd say, you know, oh, you know, it's super hard. Or somebody works in sales, for example, and they said, hey, I tried trading. I thought I was good at it. I just don't have that magical skill, like the clicking of doing things quickly and putting it all together and not having like all these crazy stress behind you. But again, the trader's a little different. Then you have implementation, which again are usually computer scientists. And then development, research, and validation is kind of one bubble for me. This for me is what I consider the quant bubble. And the reason being is because they're continuing to focus on the math and statistics um, behind financial models and theories. So for example, financial engineering is a big topic. So actually engineering financial derivative products, all of that comes into the math, stats, finance expert realm. But again, they have to be able to code somewhat because that's how you express and explore your ideas. But again, on that side, you're probably gonna be using higher level languages like Python, uh, R, SAS, for example, perhaps MATLAB. Uh, but again, those are gonna be the languages you're doing. Um, so my opinion here on this full stack, it used to be a lot more common than it is today. That was like the dream when a lot of this started off. Everyone wanted that full stack quant. But I think the realization has come to the point where finding a full stack quant is like nearly impossible. Um, finding really, really good quants in general that are specialized is still really, really challenging. Um, there's a lot of people out there that are quants, I'll put them in air quotes, a lot of people that work in these teams and stuff, but they're just not like stellar, excellent, cutting edge people that are you know experts in their field. And so when you run a firm, right, you don't wanna hire a lot of average people, especially in like a trading atmosphere, you're trying to optimize, you're trying to get that expertise. So I do see a lot of firms nowadays where, again, you hire like research and development and validation. These are typically PhDs and masters in like financial engineering, statistics, econometrics, um, and then typically on the implementation side, you'll see someone specialized in computer science. And then traders, they try to find well-rounded people that have some of those backgrounds and like a mix of the backgrounds, but they just seem to pass these like quick thinking IQ tests. So that's just my takeaway here on the full stack quant. Yes, I think they exist. Yes, I think they're super, super rare. But that being said, even if you are a full stack quant and you're super rare, to find a job that would utilize you and pay you I guess the compensation to be able to do all of that's not really worth it. Um, and I'll make a final note here, even if you become a full stack quant and you're super smart and you're brilliant, um, you'll find out a lot of times there's not a lot of jobs. So firms don't really want that. Um, companies want someone very specialized in one very specific area. And what do I mean by this? Uh, let's just say you want a model developer who only does market risk. Or I only want you know a model developer who works on equity markets. Or I only want a model validator who's credit risk, right? They're very focused roles and jobs. And for me, for example, I used to program somewhat frequently in C and C++. Uh, I've lost it, right? It's, it's just, it's gone. It, it, I could pick it up, right? It would take me a little while to get going in the groove again and get back into that computer science mindset. But again, on my daily job, that's just not what I do. And so I think even if you start out as a full stack or you become a full stack and it's just something fun and exciting to learn, um, it's really hard to keep up on everything that's going on in the markets and the academic worlds and all the cutting edge tools just because uh, you're just not gonna be doing it on a daily basis. So anyways, thank you for the question. If you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time. <laughs>